Hello and welcome to this vSuite version 0.4 video tutorial and in this video tutorial I'm just going to cover the basics of a parametric radiance lighting analysis using the Livy component of the vSuite. So in a parametric analysis we change a parameter basically and uh, version 0.4 of the vSuite allows you to change um, time allows you to change the geometry and the materiality or the position of the geometry within the model and it also allows you to combine these two parameter changes and the parameter system the ability to change parameters and simulate them is based upon and uses Blender's animation system Blender is an animation suite, a film suite so it has very good animation capabilities and whenever we animate digitally, or indeed uh, in analog, uh, we require frames. And it's these frames that we're going to use to create a parametric analysis. So I've just got a model here, which was a model I constructed quickly for the photon mapping video tutorial. Um, this blue surface is, a, is glass, this blue surface is glass. Um, the rest of the object, although it, I've turned it into a translucent shading within the viewport, these other surfaces are just white surfaces at the moment. So um, I can set up now a certain parameter change. So for example, um, I could do a time-based analysis. So if I just get rid of the lamp, we can see that the sun is here. Um, positive Y is north in the V-suite, so the sun is at midday in January. Um, I might go to uh, 31st of March, and I might say I want a simulation from 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And if I turn on animation here in the Libby context node, it now gives me the option to set the end hour. So I might say, hmm, six o'clock. And I might say, how many, how many simulations I want per hour, which is this interval hours selection. So I might say 0 0.5, so I'm doing a simulation every half an hour. Now the node will then tell you, ah, right, okay, so we're starting at two o'clock on the 90th day of the year and we are going to use one as the start frame for the simulation which is the current frame we have selected within Blender and we can see that with this one down here. So we're starting at frame one and with these different end, with these end time and with this interval per hour we're going to do nine simulations and the end frame for that simulation will be then frame nine. So if I export that, and before well, before I export it, we can see in the Libby simulation node, I did a simulation before with no parametric animation enabled. And the Libby simulation node says, right, I'm gonna do a simulation from frame one to frame one. Basically, I'm just gonna do a simulation for your current frame. But if I press export now, we should see that the Livy simulation node has picked up the frame range from here, one to nine, and we are now gonna do a simulation from frames one to nine. Now, I can look at frames within Blender with the right and left arrow on the keyboard. And we can see that if I skip through my frames, and again, we can see the frame number we're currently on down here. We can see the sun move in accordance with the times I set up down here. I actually want a morning simulation. So I'm going to make that 9 o'clock in the morning. And I'm going to make that mm, 12 o'clock. Uh, we export that. And I can see... Yeah, my sun is now starts off in the morning and 
will make its way to midday. Uh, I might start even earlier in the morning just so because I want sun to come in through this window early in the morning. So I might just make that even earlier. Eight o'clock. Uh, export that. So I will be doing a simulation for frame one all the way to frame nine. So um, I'm not going to turn on photon mapping for this one. It's low accuracy. If I press calculate, it's now going to do the simulation for each nine of those frames. And it will take a little bit longer because now we're doing nine scenarios rather than one, but it's still pretty quick. And that's finished now. So now when I press my radiance display, I can see we start off at frame one. And we can see, yeah, I've just got my sunshine coming in through that window down there, which is causing this very bright illumination within the scene at that point. 27, 27 to 29,000 lux, in fact. Um, although, might be a little high yeah okay so we can see light coming in and when some light is bouncing off this wall and landing over here as well oh well and the skylight as well it's probably delivering a little bit of light down here so um, I can now step through those animations and I can see I can even play that as an animation. It's a little bit quick by default. I can set my frame rate to one. So that time-based animation, we can see the effect on the lighting of the sun being in those different positions. Um, if we turn on numerical point display, then also these numbers, let's turn down the font size slightly, these numbers will also update based on the time we're looking at, and also the table up here will update and give minimum, average and maximum values for each frame of the simulation. Um, and that's more or less how to set up a time-based parametric analysis. But we can also set up a geometric parametric analysis. So, for example, I could, let's say, I'm going to make this window bigger. So I can come into my object data panel and for this object I can create shape keys. Now I've got to be out of it. I've actually got to be out of edit mode to create shape keys. So in object mode, create one shape key, that's my basis key that represents this geometry in its current format, and now I create a new shape key which by default will be called key one. And with that key one shape key selected here, if I now go into edit mode and I, oh, and I scale that window up and I come out of edit mode, we can see that that new larger window position has been registered to key one and the influence key one has on the basis is controlled with this slider. And sliding that up and down will change now the size of that window. So um, this is just a very, very brief introduction to setting up shape keys and mesh animations in Blender. Um, so it is worth going online and checking out how to do that. Now, once we've created this shape key and this slider controls the size of that window, we can animate 
the value of that slider. So that value can be used as a parametric analysis, so the window size can be used as a parametric analysis. So what I might do is I might go to frame 10. Now frame 10 is the first frame after my time simulation. And I might give that at frame 10 by pressing I over this value slider, I can now insert that value zero at frame 10. And I can, with my right arrow, I can go to frame 15. I can move that value to one and I can press I again. So now that window, as I go through the frames 10 to 15 will change that window size. So in my node editor, I can now turn on animated in Libby Geometry, and now I can tell the node what frames my geometric animation is taking place. It's frames 10 to 15. So now if I export that, we should now see that the Libby simulation node has picked up that we're doing frames one to nine, and it's also picked up that we're doing frames 10 to 15. So the total frames that we're going to be simulating is now 1 to 15. So I press calculate again. So this will take a tiny bit longer because we're doing an extra five simulations. But that's not too bad. Now that geometric shape, you know, shape key animation is when we're doing parametric analysis of the kind of geometry of the model. So the window sizes, window overhangs, um, angle of slats within a window blind, etc. But we can also animate materials. Um, and to animate materials, we could just, for example, if we had our glass material selected, we could press an I over material color and it would then register that material color to the current frame, it would change the color, change the frame, I again. So we can parametrically analyze different material finishes. Um, we could also rotate this whole object. So we're not animating the mesh itself, we're just animating the object and we could rotate and scale this object. And then we would just press I over the location, rotation, or scale parameter for the object. So we can basically, anything that's animatable within Blender, which is pretty much anything, can then be the basis of a parametric analysis with Livy and Radiance. So if I just press Calculate again, and again it'll take a bit longer because now we're having to register the results and convert the results for 15 frames of the animation rather than 10. But hopefully this won't take too long. Okay. So I might turn off 3D display because that can slow things down a bit when we have multiple parametric scenarios. So you can see, yeah, we have the sun moving up until frame 10, and now that upper window starts to move, and we can see the influence of that parameter change on the results, and some light shining in directly through this enlarging skylight. And same again tabular values will update automatically um, and our numerical values will update automatically. If we go outside the frame range we'll just get an invalid object in our table and we'll get no numerical result. So basically if you can animate it in Blender um, it can be a source of a parametric analysis with radiance.
and four parametric analyses. I think that's basically everything I need to say. It's always really important to check these numbers. Sometimes this number won't be updated correctly when we do an export. And although in theory it should work, try and make sure that you don't have any, if you do use two types of parametric analysis, geometry and sky time in the same simulation, try and make sure that the two frame ranges overlap. Well, not overlap, but abut each other. So you don't have one to nine and then 12 to 20, for example. It should still work anyway, but it works better if the two frame ranges coincide. If this number doesn't get reflected properly, you might have to export, re-export both again to make this number pick up the total frame range of your parametric analysis. And um, yeah, I think that's everything. Okay, thanks for watching.